Launch! Launch off, baby! Dust off! Yo, <laughs> man, how's your day going? Uh, I'm not gonna lie, it's a little rocky. Yeah? This whole week has been rocky. Freaking came back from Miami, we got got in Miami. Man. So I got I absolutely, wish I, was there out there with you guys. I got nothing. I got no so laptops, I, I don't even have my notebooks where I write all my business you related. A, you got a stone in the notes. chisel. Stone yeah. in the chisel. And a lot of heart. I still got a lot of heart. Yeah. That's what's keeping me going, but. That's what counts. Nah, the week is uh, a little rocky still. Just got a lot of business things to attend to. What? Uh, Let everyone know what happened if they don't know. Yeah, so we were in Vegas and Miami this past week, and we were filming for a special project that we'll be launching soon. Still, We're still going to launch it, even though we lost all the content. So uh, we worked with a few well-known breakers, and we were shooting in Vegas a couple of days and went out to Miami to shoot. And our final day of shooting, um, we basically got followed from one location to the other location. And uh, as soon as we got off and uh, were shooting, came back to the car and the entire vehicle was busted up and they took everything. They took uh, lots of equipment, about thirty, forty thousand $40,000 worth of equipment, including luggage, our backpacks with laptops and all of the above, you know. Now the, all the material things is, is something that we can kind of get past and you know we can replace with insurance and things like that. But, you know, I think the thing that we're most bummed about is the entire work, all the content that we shot all week. and yeah. And then it's gone, you know, and of course you can replace that too. But, you know, sometimes when you're directing and you're filming and you're shooting, you're trying to capture this amazing context spot on spur of the moment things that that are just happening right there. And then uh, you probably won't ever get it back the same. Yeah, I guess it could be worse. It could be better. We don't know that yet, but I, I'm just kind of taking it for what happened then. And uh, this was a nasty feeling, you yeah, know, man. to be able to work all week and and not have anything to show and so it sets us back uh, a few weeks but we yeah. gotta move on we're grateful for kareem and, and zeku you know you were in vegas filming kareem and zeku and logistics and logistics yeah. in, in miami yeah. so we're really grateful for those three for yeah. participating and being a part and hopefully we can uh make it schedule and work it out where we can tell their stories cause... yeah you know we'll, we'll we'll get back with them they're all you know great people to work with i yeah. think anybody that works with any of these three shouldn't have no issues um, as long as you make it right and, you mm -hmm. know, everyone's taken care of in, in their own ways. But, um, you know, they, they fully trust us and they believe in what we're doing. And so it, it was very easy and, and fun, fun to work with them on this project. This project, so it's, it's a little different than, than what we're used to. And so uh, I was excited about that. But, um, but that's know, what it is, right? Storytelling. Yeah, it's all storytelling yeah. pretty much. Yeah. And today I know we wanted to talk about... Um, a particular topic based off of uh, the competitions that we're going to be throwing this year. Yeah. Kind of the transition. Mm -hmm. And what we based it off of is like the, the value of breaking, right? That's the the thing that we, we're here to talk about today. Yeah. And what that means. Right. And I think we could start with, with that, that word storytelling. Mm -hmm. Right. Because what I want to start with is I think um, if we talk about the necessity of instilling value in breakers and breaking in general uh like that's something that needs to happen dancers in general yeah right like <clears throat> it's necessary that we as dancers as artists and particularly as breakers take hold and capture this value that is obviously there mm -hmm. right and there's so many instances of it being people being taken advantage advantage or whatever it may be searching for this value trying to make a career off, career off of it or whatever yeah but I think we can start with, uh, maybe we start backwards, we kind of reverse engineer this. Like, I think the, an like, let's start with the answer. Okay. Uh, well, first the question, of course. What is going to make uh, breakers capture this value that we, that everybody knows that we have? Dancers. Yeah. Right? And if I could start it off and you can play sure. off of this, I think the answer lies in, in storytelling. Yeah. It lies in storytelling in an authentic way, speaking our truth and telling the story that in a very organic and simple way, what got us that first moment that got us to love this art form. Right. Right. And that's taking that and applying it to what you learn as an adult, being professional right. and being structured right. and, and really taking hold and knowing what it is that you're capable of. Right. Yeah. So can you speak on, let's both speak on what it means to story tell within this culture and how that plays into instilling that value of well, a breaker. Yeah, if I, if I could chime in on that, um, 
you know, we were out there filming this project, and I was having a sit down with uh, Zeku and Logistics, and one of the things I told them is that, you know, why we're able to kind of capture this value for ourselves is because the the journey, everything that that we've been through, everything that we've seen, everything that we've jumped, obstacles that we've been through hurdles we had to go through like all of the above like that's what makes our story valuable because when people you know when people see us dance to to the untrained eye it's just like wow cool that's awesome you know but when when we're there we're pouring out struggle uh excitement sadness joy a lot of these different things right so I think what makes great breakers is is the journey. It's the stories and the struggles that we, that we had to go through to to create full value for ourselves. And um, there's a lot of talented people in this world, a lot of talented breakers in this world. But um, and everybody has their own story, right? Everybody has their own story. But there's a few that have amazing stories and uh very captivating and, and moving stories that that people can when they Needs see to be heard. yes to be heard. when 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 you see them you want to know more about these people you know yeah. um and so i was telling zeku and logistics this that, that you know i can look in a room and see everybody dancing and you know and to 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 maybe even to me or to anybody it could just be like it just looks like a lot of noise yeah you know what i'm saying but if you go in there and you truly just look beyond the move and you kind of look at the 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 body and what it's doing and the facial expressions and all of those things and you start to see the value in what's happening it starts to really paint the picture a little bit more clearly uh and and that is the story that is the story of those individuals and those are the things that need to be told um so it's important for dancers to be able to to stand on their platform with their two feet and not rely on other platforms to be able to kind of create their story for yeah, them yeah. now it's nice to have platforms that help us reinforce the story or but give us a platform goal? what's the end goal right that's the question to that's, ask that is the question you know that is the question but um you know with that being said i don't want anybody to listen to this and say like not all breakers are valuable no there's just some that have amazing stories it's like everybody in the nba or anybody in the nfl or mlb or whatever you know sports organization that you like to watch you know, everybody that is there for a reason. Everyone's talented. But there's very few Michael Jordans, LeBron James, yeah. Kobe Bryant's. Well, to back, up, to back up a little bit, you mentioned MLB and, and professional sports organizations. Mm-hmm. And this word sport has been introduced to our culture right. recently, uh, primarily because of the Olympics. But even before that, before Olympics is even in the picture, uh, with an emphasis on competition, there was there was debate. I, I particularly remember like in early 2010s, sport or art, sport or art, sport or art, right? Mm-hmm. So you bring up MLB and NBA, and these on a simple level are industries. Like uh, let's 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 go back. In, uh, basketball and baseball, there those are both cultures. Right. Those are both art forms. Yeah. Right. There's yeah. definitely an artistry and there's a culture and there's a specificity to what baseball players are. And what I basketball think in anything is that we do and re- what it represents. Right. Mm-hmm. So I've always said this. I think there's wasted energy on terms of sport or art, sport or art. Those are just words. Yeah. You know, what is the feeling of this? What is sure. it is? So, you know, I think that <clears throat> it's, it's necessary to look at the models, whether it be skateboarding or basketball or football and look at what that journey was mm-hmm. and look at what is the similarities to mm-hmm. what we we have as breakers and breaking yeah and what the differences are and then from there once you identify that then you can look at a course of actions to see what it takes to create a sustainable and uh, a to the core rooted industry right right that can be a sustainable source of living for it. We talk about these roles. We do it with the award show that we have. Yeah. Uh, whether it be content creators or it be coaches or right. judges or whatever it may be. Mm-hmm. Everybody out there is watching this and listening. If you're a breaker, you know this. You know mm-hmm. that there is these roles that exist, but within these roles, there is no sustainability and there's no clear way of, of doing this and doing what you love for it, right? And going back to the question posed, right? And we're talking about the NBA and, and the superstars and all this, but... The very first step is creating internal infrastructure yeah. 
that doesn't rely on outside validation. Yeah. That's what it comes down to. And I right? think that I think to to get in here real quick, that's the problem is that our society or our environment of just anything. I'm not just talking about the breaking community, but uh, everybody relies on outside validation. reinforcement mm-hmm. or validation from something else where we have the power and the authority to create that mm-hmm. and unify and uh, amplify that opportunity for ourselves. Mm-hmm. And so we need to get away from that. You know, we rely on on major corporate companies. We rely on... Uh, like to have those validate us, not to support us. It's important for corporate companies to support That's us. That's an important distinction. Yeah. That's it, a very exactly. important Exactly. So you need to learn how to differentiate that and, and understand it and yeah. understand it very clearly. Yeah. You know, it's not it's not selling out. It's just having an understanding that, you know, when you have some backing, it allows you as an individual and as an individual brand to take you who you are a step further because you have extra support. Now, if you rely on that, that's your fault. Mm-hmm. That's mm-hmm. your fault for mm-hmm. creating that. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And I think we get stuck on that. We get stuck on that reliability of like, I need this. And if this is taken away, then, oh, my God, what am I going to do? Yeah. yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's That should not be the case. And, and that's why I'll use myself, for example. For me, I've always stood on my two feet. I've always been like, you know what? If no one's going to do it. I'm going to do it. I'm going to surround myself with people like yourself, Jeremy, and other people around us that go out there and do the same thing. Because it's important to be able to stand on our own platforms that we build for reliability, for these journeys that we're trying to create or the capture that we're trying to create from these opportunities. Can I use a specific example in the community context for breaking community? Um, This is, let me put it in, in a form of advice, I guess, is that uh, using the Olympics as an example, you should not fashion your operations as a breaker, whether it be in a competitive sense, whether it be in a uh, community leader sense, an organizer, a teacher, a judge, whatever it may, whatever the role is. I feel you should not fashion your actions off of the Olympics. And everything that you do as a community member, whatever role it is, it should be with the intent and the foundation of why you started this and basically to summarize it you would be doing this regardless if the olympics was in the picture or not on a business level on a cultural level on on an artistic level because historically within this culture and even within the nba and all these other adjacent art forms and cultures that's how they became successful is they stood on their own Mm -hmm. two feet and Mm -hmm. they established their value and they established their infrastructure and they used support from the outside that going back to that, the distinction, it's not about relying, yeah. it's about using it and exactly. collaborating. And, 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 and to add to that, that's that's a really good point. And to add to that, because here we are, right? Olympics, Paris 2024 and beyond. We're all for it. We're all everybody here in this room in this building is all for it. We we're excited for it and all that. But at the same time, we need to let them know, whoever that is, right? I just quote unquote whoever that is. What it is. What it is, <laughs> and that, you know. You need us. Yeah. You need us. Yeah. And we're going to use the platform that you're giving us, and we're very grateful for that opportunity to leverage our community, our environment, our world to elevate that so it creates opportunities mm-hmm. for other people mm-hmm. in the future. Mm-hmm. But if there's a lot of reliability that without this, we can't get there, that's a big problem. Yeah. That's a major problem. There's a wall. There's a ceiling. Yeah. 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 And I think there's people out there that are running into that wall because mm. they don't understand that distinction. Mm. You know, they don't understand that. And for for people like us, like we 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 stick to our guns. We hold our ground very toughly mm. and very proudly because we believe in what we're creating. We believe in what we do. Again, it's not to say we're not believing that. We we think that's great. Yeah. But we need to reinsure and to let them know that without us, your equation is not up. complete. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? <clears throat> and that's, that's extremely important. And, 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 you know, going on that topic is, you know, you run into all these problems right now. Let's talk about this. We were talking about this right before we started. But, like, this whole Super Bowl thing, right? Mm-hmm. You got this whole Super Bowl thing where it's like they're not paying dancers. And Well, first of all, the Super Bowl, the Olympics – None of those organizations or companies or entities, they don't pay anybody. Yeah, the term used is exposure, but 
it's like there's inherent value and in, and across the board if there is paid performers they are paid but then the majority of like yeah the point's been made that um Bru where there's Bruno Mars, they do it well for exposure. But that translates to album sales. That translates to the, to whatever it may be. Well, again, know. again, <clears throat> I'm a fan of of it all, and I think it's contingent to the artists or the individual to do what they want to do, mm. right? And operate how they want to operate. But you know, if that's the case, the Olympics are not going to pay you for showing up. Mm. They're not. Yeah. They're going to cover your expenses and get you there, and it's going to be a great opportunity for you. Yeah. That eventually leads to more opportunity. Yeah. So this whole Super Bowl thing, I get it. I understand that. But if the entire scene was says, like, no, I'm gonna, we're going to hold hands, and we're going to do this together, and we're going to stand, they're not going to care. Yeah. They're going to move always, on because yeah. there's always going to be somebody that's going to do it. That's so the I think, reality. I think, I that's think, the reality. So it's not bad to think that way. But I think it's a waste of time. It's a, it's missing. The saying is like you're missing the forest for the trees, or other way around. It's like you're, it's a bigger picture versus little picture sense. Yeah, like, yeah. Standing in solidarity and saying, it's great. That's know. what I'm saying. But I also think that there's going to be some time wasted in the process because these major for outside forces and entities, they're going to move on. Yeah. They don't want to be on in a waiting zone. Yeah, yeah. You know they don't. Yeah. They time is money. Yep. Time is money, and they're going to find a way to make it happen with or without us. Yeah. And that's why I don't like to rely yeah. on outside entities for my validation. That goes back to everything. So we go out and create it yeah. ourselves. So when you say, yeah, when we say uh, time wasted or energy wasted, it means rather than fighting this fight, because any fight you fight, if you stand in solidarity and you organize efforts within the community, whether it be on social media of like share this post or yeah. write, this, write this thing or actual action of denying gigs or whatever that takes energy you know what i mean it does so are we going to divide divert our energy to this low-hanging fruit like this like okay what's again going back to end goals okay we fought our fight and now we get 500 dollars from the super bowl yeah we won yeah okay what happens after that and what happens know, it, the next month but you, you know, know there you know and i understand that they could establish this and it does need to be established that um you know, uh, gigs and whatever service it is, that there's proper compensation. That's not the point. Point is, let's focus on on the long term, the sustainability, the things, then this corp, this internal infrastructure that will look out for everybody. Right. That will look truly look out for everybody in a long term basis, not just a gig to gig basis. Well, look at some of the things that we've experienced, even with Break Free. We're we're a small business that was created by somebody from within the community built and developed by people within the community to be able to amplify itself to a much bigger level where we're still a very small business. People kind of see us, you know, a little bit bigger and we're growing, but we're still a small business. And then whenever we reach out to people and we, we, first of all, it's very rare when we offer anybody just like to come do it and do it for free. It's very rare. We appreciate when people want to volunteer their time and, 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 and provide and, and donate you know themselves to to be a part of something that we're doing but most of the time we're always offering somebody you know some type of pay or whatever and you know we've gotten like hey can you guys do more or I, I can't do it because i needed to get more or whatever and i'm like man we're a small business but yet you have somebody like the super bowl or whatever and then they'll offer you 300 bucks and you'll go do it because maybe their visibility is a little bit bigger for whatever reason but for me that's that's kind of a slap to the face because we're supposed to, we're supposed to validate our environments, our communities, and bring more visibility to what we're building yeah. as a community. Yeah. Right. Again, these these big major entities that are already there, they're gonna be there with or without us. They've yeah. been there for a hundred years. Yeah. You know. Can can we? I think in another important distinction to make, and we can uh, build this under what the term professionalism, right? Because what we've been speaking on is like. What we've been speaking on is believing in the value. Mm -hmm. And I think, I do think everybody believes in the value. Like, that's what we opened this up yeah. with. Everyone believes in it. But then there's there's another important piece to the equation, and that can be considered professionalism. And it, it just needs to, another way of simplifying it is it's just work. Yeah. Hard, dedicated work. Yeah. Because this is not an is. easy task. Right. We might, we're simplifying it in this talk, but no, there's work to do. You know what I'm saying? A lot of work. There's a lot of work to do. Yeah. So I, I think that's important to say where it's like, I can use a specific example where it's like, uh, oh, yeah, we believe in the value, but then uh, or you, you're saying to believe in it. But then 
the support versus using thing, but you also are, are sponsored by this company. Like, so why are you doing this and then mm-hmm. saying this? But again, that's the distinction using well, versus supporting, right? But I think if we could talk about professionalism specifically, it's like the equation of belief and conviction in your ambitions and dreams and goals and breaking and being elevated on this platform and you individually being elevated as a breaker within this platform needs to be reinforced with what what can we define as professionalism and hard work because sometimes people think of it as this one thing but in our experience it's it's something that can be simplified though too mm. it's just being courteous of others being responsive being respectful of people's times even if you what i've learned is if if you agree with a person or not if you're going to engage with them Mm-hmm. Whether it be an email or mm-hmm. in person or in phone conversation, you have to be respectful of people's times and Absolutely. give that. No and, matter what, and you'll get that reciprocity. That's what professionalism yes. is. Simply, yes. you know what I mean. Yeah. It's like take your take your time, take your yeah. time, and take their times. Take your time seriously and take their time seriously. Absolutely, that that's what it is. Man. And that's what I've always talked about, mm-hmm. even with sponsorships. A lot of people always ask me about the monster deal, or they'll ask me about something else that we're doing on. I mean, that we got going on. The, the, the difference is is that I don't any any sponsorship that I've ever been a part of or break free's ever been a part of it's not a, I don't look at it as a sponsorship it's a partnership it this takes two of us to be able to work together mm-hmm. and a lot of times people are on the sponsorship side just on the receiving end because that's what they're that's what they're uh, used to right mm-hmm. that's what they're used to receiving and accepting that when you're sponsored all you do is receive 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 yeah. but if you know Yes, if you want a sponsor, that's probably what it's going to be. I don't want sponsors. I want partners. I mm-hmm. want people to be able to believe in what we're building so we can form a relationship together for future growth, not just for what's immediate and, and instant, right? Um, I'm okay with delayed gratification, even if it takes some time to kind of carve out that partnership, but that's extremely important. And that's ex- extremely important if you're talking about breakers capturing value. Please listen to this message. Don't look at, you know, these potential opportunities as a sponsorship. Look at it as a partnership because mm. not only are they going to expect something from you, but you should expect something from them. Mm. And then find ways to go above and beyond to take that much deeper mm. and to bigger levels, you know. So and, 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 and to shout out our sponsors, and I don't mean this to be kind of like a corny plug, but like all the sponsors that we work with, whether it's Providence, Monster Energy, HyperX, ViewSonic, Display, Anybody that, ever, that we've ever worked with, they allow us to be creative and to be free within what we're building. They just want to be supporters of it. Yeah. They want to be supporters of it. And that's why I love working with the partners that I mentioned because it allows us to be who we are and amplifying our voice and with their technology, their hardware, their resources – to be able to bring in more people. This mm-hmm. is not just about us. Yeah. We, we hope the HyperXs of the world, the Providence, can go out there and work with others as mm-hmm. well. It's mm-hmm. not just us, you know yeah. what I mean? But it's, it starts with having that understanding that it's a partnership and we're working on this together. Because of that formula of, uh, of capturing value, believing in the value, added and reinforced with respectful... Right work on yep. both sides reciprocity yeah you know yeah that's what it is that's good and i think to end this to put this in another specific context uh i re- we started this with logistics last week in the episode and and hopefully we're painting a good picture of this on social media or whatever it is but um i want i wanted to be clear what the intent is behind everything we do but let's talk about the events mm-hmm. right our, our championship series festivals the four weekends, the four weekends that we're throwing here in Houston, right? Yeah. We kind of clarified a little bit on the competitive aspect last week on this, on uh, on breaking down that role of B-boy and B-girl within the competitive brackets and breaker and mm-hmm. inclusion of that. Mm-hmm. But based off this value of breaker, something, if you haven't paid attention or noticed, or this hasn't been clear, um, we're taking a step to try and establish this competitive, let's call it league, right? Yeah. Uh, this competitive form of events where there's simple standards. It means everybody who does participate is paid. Mm-hmm. They are accommodated for their flights per diem and honorarium when they come here in battle. 
and there's a cash prize traditionally as it is in events there's what's first right. place what's second yeah. place what's third place in a in a front end aspect on the on the aesthetic side we talked about this like what is the standard breaking flyer what's the biggest font on there what's the, the prize. biggest the prize money yeah, what's the, the prize, prize money and yeah. let's shift like that is in a way whether we know it or not subconsciously that's a a priority in in breakers eyes an incentive you know mm -hmm. whether I've got. I've realized it for myself. I, yeah. I've asked that question before. We've I asked think that. We all have. What's that? Yeah. What's the cash prize? You know, yeah. who are the judges? Yeah. I don't want. We want to take a step away from that. And in a competitive, that that goes into the cultural side, right? For our culture day. But in a competitive mm -hmm. side, eight invited only. We want to put on a. Sh we want the best of the. We want in we a want battle to put on sense. A good show. We want to put on a on, on a good show that showcases what breaking is in a battle competitive. At sense. a high level. We yeah. use this example for it, where it's like. Whatever we can use any event around the world as an example, and like, uh, man, think about how many legends are in this building right now. Yeah. How many talented people? And right. there's been some matchups that we've never just been able to see, and the simple reason why is because the bracket did not fall that way. Yep. Exactly. <laughs> For yeah. whatever. So yeah. why why do we have to wait? And if we never did this, there just would be matchups that we would never see. Yeah. You know. For sure. So we wanna we wanna have it clear that you know this event's the competitive day, the Sunday, the final day, is a show. It's yeah. a show. It's the best, the best on the front end. You're I mean, gonna the, come in the, and you're gonna the, see the, it. The you're breakers gonna... are battling. They're gonna be doing their thing. But it, ultimately, it is entertainment. It's a show. You know what I mean? You know, it's not. It's not like whenever we talk about a battle, just to kind of come to the side for a little bit. Like when we talk about a battle, a real battle is whenever you're at an event, a party, a jam, a cipher outside, and you get called out, and you just go, and you just go to whatever happens. That's a battle. And it's a moment. But, you know, this is this is a competition uh, showcase with entertainment and and uh, in an environment with high-level production and things like that to, to entertain and bring people together and to showcase breaking at a high level, mm -hmm. you know. So that that's that's the goal with what we're doing, and it's just to bring visibility and unite and bring everybody together, and most importantly, just to start somewhere by paying people for their time. Mm -hmm. You know, Value, we don't valuing them. Yeah, we don't have all the money in the world, but we're grateful for what we're able to offer. Um, and in most cases, cases is probably more than what we can offer, but we're doing the best that we can because everything. Everything costs money to be able to activate something so special that we're trying to accomplish. And even with the B-Boy, B-Girl thing, like with the B-Boy, it's just to, to unify and bring everybody together. You know, we have limited time on Sunday to create a dope event. You know what I mean? And if we went the traditional way, just like every other event, and like what we did last year with the B-Boy, B-Girl, cool. Like, it, that would be cool, but I think it wouldn't separate us from what everybody else is doing. Yeah. And I think what we're trying to do here is just kind of elevate it, create more of a professional league style setting where even the outside eye can come in and be like, oh, yeah. this is cool. Because one thing that I've learned, without that general public, we can't ever get to where we want to get to. And general public will not want to be at eight hours for a jam, yeah, yeah. sitting for prelims, well, going, going through prelims, going through all the categories, going and waiting for that one final yeah. amazing part of the event that last hour or two when it's down to the eight or down to the four yeah. and you get to witness the best of the best yeah yeah well i've mentioned it to you like this before it's like it's without a doubt the energy of breaking and in particular battle is captivating to every single person on sure. this earth yeah meaning if you're in any setting it could be the white house you know yeah. it could be whatever Mike if somebody if, yeah probably but if you start breaking yeah. In any setting, it immediately, boom, yeah. eyes oh, there, for right? Sure. Yeah. And that that goes back to the value. There's value in that. Mm -hmm. There's extreme value in that. I'm not meaning just in a in a business uh, financial sense, but I mean like that's that's special. Yeah. That's spiritual. You know what I mean? Right. And and yeah, exactly. When I when I talk about when I think about my wife, who's not a, a dancer, a B girl, she hasn't been to an event in like so long. She loves and supports everything I do, yeah. but it's it's because it's just not feasible. Yeah, logistically possible for yeah, her to stand and, around and, and for eight hours. You know what I'm saying? Especially if we have kids, <laughs> and then you got to bring the kids with you. Yeah, man. Like you know, the kids yeah. are not gonna hold yeah. up through all that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So we want to be able to create something where families can come and mm -hmm. and be a part of witnessing breaking at its best. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. and you know, I've said this plenty of times, and I mean it. Are we going to be perfect? No. Yeah. But we're going we're to do our best and we're, we're trying to set some standards 
and what we do and and just create a good a, a, a good path a yeah. good path for for people to to be honored in, in in a light where this is what they love to do and yep. here you go let's let's do it for everybody yep i think to to end this it's an important thing to cap it off and we can tie all this in with the value and whatever but another important note i want it to be clear if it's not said already or seen uh because it's one thing to attempt this and put this in a setting uh, we're talking about a high level production and this is a, a specific topic people debate a lot about about stage battles this yeah. or that the, the formula of a battle of a dope battle and an organic moment it really can be simplified with this two authentic dope artists and dancers mm. good music yep and good energy in an, in an environment sure. it's really as simple yeah. as that right yeah. so this approach is not something like we're going to have a, a ill venue it's going to be on stage yeah to be clear with everybody but yeah. there's no restrictions to music this year yeah no restrictions it doesn't right. have to be just original music mm -hmm. any music the music we get down the music that birthed this culture yeah right so that's that's important that that hits that yeah if you haven't seen the lineup already with flea palmer gravity rocks kate phil uh, Box, Melissa, like yeah. these are the authentic artists, the right. best of the best. Yeah, you know what I mean. And then you're gonna have this Houston energy. You're gonna have this worldwide energy here in Houston. It's like there's no way that you're not gonna see something special with these yeah. battles. And, and then and you're you you've already cut out all the major part of the competition. You're down to that, so you know every battle is gonna be really good. Yeah, it is. It just is. Yeah, it's set up and it's designed. Yeah. that way mm -hmm. you know what i mean to tie all this in about like this is a question i've heard too already with this well how do people qualify how are people incentivized to want to be a part of this right this goes back to the whole topic you instill your value every single one of these dancers flea palmer grab rocks every single one they've created their value oh yeah these people live off of this yeah in, in their own respect yeah so it's it's really like your incentive as a breaker should not be to make it past prelims. Yeah. There's no value in that. No, there isn't. The value is establishing your value, your, your legacy mm -hmm. and, and capturing your value, whether it be through some on a small level, like how you represent yourself, where you go, your network, yep. who you talk with, what you represent. That's what it is. I, I hope that makes sense to people out there. And, and I think it's, it's, something, um, it's something necessary. It's ambitious. And what and and what we're trying to do, and I I just hope it's not misunderstood. <laughs> nah, I, th I think it'll be good, man. So I'm I'm ex I'm excited for for it. Um, I know Space City is our, our first event, but even from that event, we're gonna we're gonna learn a lot, and we hope to that at, through every event, we just can get a little bit better and better, and through the process, people will start to receive it better. And again, just trust us through the process. I think it's gonna be great. Look forward to it. Yeah, the four events this year, Space City. Break, break X, X, Break Free Day, Survival, and, and then we just course. and then we just announced this today. This is not officially a championship series events, but we're bringing this three pillar approach to Cyprus. Shout out yeah, to plan Rankings. your trip to Europe. Strawberry Jam, June June tenth, twelfth. Tiny island. little island of Cyprus. Cyprus, yep. So all this yeah. value, everything we're speaking of, we want to bring it to the world, and we hope you guys love it, y'all. Much love. All right, y'all. Peace. Peace.